So not a lot of people know, but you actually don't need a telescope to do planetary astrophotography. That's right. So here, for example, we have just a DSLR camera, the Canon 7D Mark II, with a cheap lens, a 70 to 300 millimeter lens, which is uh, you know, very affordable. And we, just with this and a tripod, we're going to be attempting to take a picture of planets tonight. That's right. And it might not come out like beautiful and amazing, but it's still very, very impressive, especially for beginners. Yeah, so we're not gonna get any like amazing, crazy pictures tonight, that's for sure. But if you're just getting started in this hobby, just seeing the planet on your LCD screen is just so impressive. And I think it's awesome. Uh, when we started, we you know, our first time taking a picture of planets was with something like this. And just seeing, you know, seeing it, the, the, the bright dot right there was just fantastic. So um, Today we have the moon and we also have Jupiter and Saturn above us. Yeah, they're somewhere, somewhere there. So let's aim the camera at Saturn first. Uh, so Saturn is great, but we won't see anything because the moons are not very bright. So we'll just mostly have a bright, you know, very bright dot. But if we're lucky, we'll be able to see uh, not the ring itself, but like the elongation of the planet. So kind of the rough shape of the ring, um, hopefully. But the best though uh, is Jupiter. Jupiter is great because, you know, once again, we won't have any details or anything, but we'll see a bunch of moons because the moons are so bright. We'll, I think we'll see at least four moons tonight. So hopefully we'll be able to capture that. Let's try. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have the camera, okay. I'm going to try to bring it to you guys, just so you have the best possible view, okay. And let's turn it on. But before we start and look at Saturn, you might be wondering where the heck Antoine got his very cool shirt from. Really cool, right? This is from Into the AM and they offered to sponsor this video. And we said yes, because you know why? It's space related. This is a space t-shirt, it's pretty cool. So I'm always wearing space shirts, usually they're of my own design, but the reason why I love these ones is because they have an awesome feel and also for someone tall like me, they fit a bit longer than usual, which is great. And they're also pretty shrunk. We love it. And you know, of course, there's space themed designs, but there's a bunch of other ones too available there's So many on space website. themed ones, and so many. they were so kind and gave us a discount code that you guys can see in the description of this video down below. And also they have some great bundle deals, so you can get like three shirts for a great price. So go check it out. Woo! Now, to Saturn. Back to the planets. So the, the lens here is uh, all the way at 300. And let's try to aim. So right now I am going to put my settings at like maybe like two seconds long, uh, just randomly. F wide open, which at this focal length with this affordable lens is 5.6. And the ISO 6400, which is great. I also have a uh, timer here, of, of a two second timer just so the camera doesn't really shake when I, when I press the shutter button. And here, let's go into live view. Let's try to find the bright dot in there. There you go, see, bright dot out of focus, but it's there. And I'm going to use the digital zoom to zoom in all the way on that dot and try to use the focus ring on the lens to make it as small as possible. And by the way, this is Saturn, so it hopefully will look like it's Saturn. And of course, the better your lens, the more beautiful your target is going to be. But even here, you can see the you know the planet is not round. It's um, let me film for you. It's not round. It is uh, oval. So the rings are making the shape uh, you know, not round, which is cool to see. And so let's see here. We can try taking a picture of it. Uh, I'll do maybe. You no, know let's go with 130th, which is maybe a good start. And I'm going to zoom in all the way. And so it's too bright, so I'm going to make the F number about 11, which usually is good for like planets and moons. And then I'm going to maybe shutter speed, I'll do one to one, 125. It's been a while, so let's see what happens here. So this is the best I could get. Uh, it's not amazing, but at least you can see the actual shape of Saturn and the nice colors, the brown color. So this is what I use, 1 400, uh, F11 and ISO of 2500. And then we'll move to Jupiter. And Jupiter is actually pretty cool because of uh, the moons. So let's rotate this to Jupiter, which is right over there. 
right there, I see it. Okay, so we have Jupiter there, and right away you can see the moons already, which is pretty cool. Let me zoom in so you can see better. See? Like on the live view, it's so cool to see that. So this is Jupiter and several of the moons. You can usually, with a camera like this, you can usually see four moons, I think. Maybe five sometimes. But here, oh, it's really cool. All right, so let's take a picture. Jupiter, of course, it's a bit low right now. And with this lens, you don't see any of the bands or anything. It's just a featureless planet. Now I'm going to try something different, which is what I prefer to do on Jupiter. Let's try with a higher ISO, 3200, uh, F5.6, a bit crazy. And let's try just so we can catch the moons. I'm getting attacked by bugs and it's making me crazy. Um, so let's see here. Okay, oh, we have one moon as you can see. So we're going the right direction. We have one moon, but I want more. I want more moons. So I will try 160, 64. Now I'm pretty sure we'll see like all four moons for sure. Here we have the moons. Uh, as you can see, it's not very, very crisp. Let's make sure we are properly focused. All right, so obviously it's going to be very difficult to get a better image than this of planets using a cheap uh, lens and beginner camera without any extenders. But I think it's still super awesome to see, you know, a, a natural planet pop up on your LCD screen. It's just fantastic to me. And you know, what's really interesting to note is that our previous attempt was actually better than this one was. So, uh, you know, I think we'll have a comparison here, but you'll see that the moons are a lot more nice. They're better. Yeah, I think it's because the planet was so low in the horizon, but the first time we attempted it, like years ago, it was super high in the sky. So the moons were much crisper and rounder. So it, We love a crispy moon. So it's always very important that you wait until the planet is high in the sky so it doesn't have to go through so much atmospheric disturbance mm -hmm. um, before you capture it. And um, yeah. Just one of many things that yes. could be troublesome. Uh, also a tip, if you want to capture Jupiter, you really have to either decide on capturing the planet itself or the moons. Um, you can do both, but doing both at the same time is kind of hard, so you have to switch your settings. So use a higher ISO and higher exposure time if you want the moons in there, and then lower your ISO or lower your exposure time, or also lower your, um, well, your aperture if you want to get the planet without the moons. So in the end, you know, it wasn't as impressive, which is kind of a bummer, but it's okay. We still hope that it inspires you as a beginner to, you know, continue doing these things. And maybe just like us, you'll look back at data from five years ago and be like, you know, yeah. it's good to see how much, I, <laughs> how, how much better I've gotten and, yeah. you know, keep going at it. Yeah, I think it's still awesome. Like if you're a beginner, just do it. It's awesome. You have a planet officially, like you, you capture the planet. It's, it's amazing. We'll leave it at that. Yes. So you so. guys uh, enjoy, get out there, do the thing, and also clear skies. Clear skies. <laughs>